In this Debaco University video, I'm going to go over artificial lighting options for cannabis production and give you some of the pros and cons of some of the common artificial lighting sources that you might be considering. So if you ever wonder why there's so many artificial lighting options, well, there's some advantages and disadvantages of each, which will be discussed here. So first off, the goal of all grow lights is to help plants grow. That's the whole idea or concept behind all the artificial lights. There are different um, than typical room lights because grow lights are based on the spectrum that is required by plants. So just because we see a nice uh, light that looks nice, we want to make sure it's specifically designed for plants so it's producing the spectrum and the wavelengths that the plants need to utilize. So I provide with a good reference article here, looking at some artificial lighting systems, uh, all sources provided right here if you want to look at it for yourself in greater detail. Now looking at a variety of grow light options, there are a wide range of bulb types that can be used as grow lights. However, the general categories include fluorescent lights, which are typically T5 lights, high intensity discharge lamps or HID lights, which include high pressure sodiums and ceramic metal halides, and then light emitting di diodes, which are your LED lights. Uh, which seems to be getting very popular recently. So again, this is just a nice little comparison looking at the spectrum, the cost, power draw, efficiency, and applications. I'm going to go through here and provide you with some advantages and disadvantages of each. However, before I get to the specifics of the different types, we want to look at lighting technology continues to change. So while technology continues to kind of change over time, the degree of light efficacy advancements varies by the light type. LED lights show the greatest promise for continued future improvements. We see a lot of leveling off in our, many of our other lights, such as the incandescents, the fluorescents, the metal halides, but we see the LED light group being definitely one that is kind of going against the general trend of leveling off, and this is kind of exponential rise. And here's where it's estimated to kind of go to going forward. So that's just something to take into consideration. Now the distance between lights and the plants. So here we see just a little example here of some LED lights and we kind of see a measuring device here to kind of get an idea how far that light is away from the plants. The distance between the lights and the plants should be based on the intensity of the light. This should be measured using a PAR, P, uh, PPFD, or PFD uh, meter there. The lower light output, the closer the plants should be, and the higher the light output, ideally the further the plant should be, simply to avoid the chance of leaf burn or damage. To maximize yields, growers should keep all plant factors, such as water, concentration of carbon dioxide, um, optimum levels, because cannabis can tolerate high levels of light, which can help increase yields, assuming all other factors are not limiting, including, but not limited to, nutrients. So let's look at the first one here, looking at our fluorescent lights. Well, the advantages of fluorescence is that it can be close, placed really close to the plants. They're also not very expensive, and the bulbs have a very long life of about 20,000 hours. However, the disadvantages are that they have a low light intensity, they use multiple bulbs per unit, and the disposal of those bulbs can be a challenge because of some of the toxic metals that they contain. Going on to CMH, or ceramic metal halide lights, the advantages of those are that they're easy replacements for a fluorescent light setup, one bulb design with more spectrum options compared to the fluorescence, and they also have a long bulb life. Why they're not used is that they're not great for the flowering phase. They produce a fair amount of heat and also the disposal, disposal of their bulb as well, but it tends to be smaller and it tends to be less of them compared to a fluorescent option. High pressure sodium lights uh, can be used for the entire grow season, even though it's not ideal for the vegetative stage, it still can be used. Prices have become very attractive, meaning they've been reduced quite a bit. And it's considered to be the industry standard, so there's many reliable options with the high pressure sodium or HPS lights. Reason why some growers elect not to use them is that their bulbs have a relatively short life of only about 5,000 hours. They do produce a fair amount of heat, and they have a limited spectrum there. So there's some disadvantaged high pressure sodium lights. Lastly, going on to LED lights, the light emitting diodes, they are a full spectrum light and they can increase compounds that define high quality cannabis. They also have a very long life of typically 50,000 hours or greater, depending on the manufacturer. However, the disadvantage of LED lights is the initial cost. There's a lot of variability currently on the market and the total coverage area per light. So when investing in any light, you want to make sure to do your research, look at everything extensively and make the best option that's a fit for your particular growing situation.